myself. I'm Velva Mani. This uh, conference will in... now be recorded. I just uh, have five years of IT experience. Uh, I'm, and also I'm a AWS certified solution architect. Uh, just okay. going into the uh, seminar. <laughs> Before starting this one, I want to know whether you have any uh, previous uh, experience on cloud computing or you have any idea about cloud computing? Yes. Okay, just uh, could you explain uh, whether you worked on any cloud computing technologies or what you understand about cloud computing so that it is easy for me to explain in details. Uh, okay, see, basically I worked on servers, VMWares, AWS. Okay. okay. Uh, some of the platforms for one of our own products as well for some of the customers. Okay. okay. Uh, but it is mostly about VMware like now, setting up a server, setting up a platform, like that. Okay. Coming to cloud computing, cloud computing is again it is a on-premise network which is managed by the third party. Okay, the size is very huge compared to our own cloud on-premise data centers. The cloud data center is uh, uh, the size is very huge because they are providing service to millions of people, and they are providing computing uh, services, they are providing storage service, they are providing network service. And they're providing database service. They're providing other monitoring applications. They're providing uh, IoT related services. They're providing uh, in Amazon. They're providing IoT and machine machine learning related services. And these services we can control from mobile phone, laptop, servers, or desktops or tablet from wherever it is. The only thing is we need a, a device which have a internet connections. So that we can log into our, our uh, console and then we can manage our cloud resources. Okay. A few public cloud adaptions in the year 2017 and 2018, they predict that there is a 9 to 10 percentage uh, uh, improvements compared to the 2017 and 2018. And Azure, Azure is growing very faster. Because most of the .NET projects in the recent year, most of the .NET projects are moving to AWS Azure Cloud. So Azure is growing very faster than AWS, but still AWS reached the top position. So they are the one who is leading uh, in the top position for the last 12 years. And we have other competitors like Google Cloud Engines, IBM Watsons, VMware Cloud on AWS, Oracle Cloud, Alibaba Cloud, Digital Oceans. Rack space like that. We have a lot of uh, cloud providers. Among these, AWS and Azure is in the top. Uh, this is the stack layer of on premise data centers and then cloud data centers. Initially, we have our data center. On the data centers, we will, we will do our networking and then we have a storage servers and then we have our physical servers. On each physical, the, the physical servers has been Virtualize into multiple servers in each virtual server uh, virtual servers. We will install operating systems on top of that We will install middleware runtime data and applications the entire layer has to be taken care by us Okay, we uh, we need a network specialty persons. We need a server storage specialty person We need a server specialty person and then we need a secure uh, OS security specialty portion and then application specialty and then only it will go to the developers Whereas in cloud we have three service models one is infrastructure as a service Next one is a platform as a service and third one is a software as a service If you see in the infrastructure as a service we will go to our provider and we will ask that I need infrastructure with Red Hat, Red Hat operating systems so otherwise I need operate uh, infrastructure with Windows Server 2000 uh, 12 R2 servers. I just I go and request that I need a uh, Solaris service or I need a uh, CentOS service. Like that, we will go and request them. They will provide a service to us. They will provide an infrastructure service to us. The layer from network till operating system, the layer is managed by the service providers. We have to take care only our middleware and then applications. Once the server is ready, we will install our middleware. And then we will deploy our server applications and then we will start working on that service. 
this is infrastructure as a service whereas in a platform as a service i don't know anything about the server uh, creations and software installation and all just i'm a pure developer I just i want to uh, develop applications and then i have to uh, run it there so we will go to the service provider and then we will ask that i need a server with java java i need a server with dotnet otherwise i need a server with oracle database we will go and request them they will create a server in background when we are requesting the background they will create a server and then they will deploy uh, they will install the operating system operating systems on top of the operating systems they will install whatever software we requested and then they will deliver to us we have a dashboard to upload our source code there we will go and upload our source code it will automatically deploy in that particular service and then we will started using that service that is called as a platform as a service and the last one is software as a service here we no need to do anything every each and every layer is taken care by the service provider the best examples is salesforce software uh we we are not going to do anything with the salesforce just we'll go and create a username password and we will start using the salesforce applications that is the best uh, examples of software as a service in aws we have a few service uh, many services like this uh, examples simple email service and simple queue service simple notification service these are the software as a service where we no need to uh, worry much about the things just we'll go and invoke the service it will automatically send the notifications or emails or me uh, queue messages everything this do you have any doubt on this uh, slide santa do you have any uh, doubt on the service model okay we'll move to the next thing uh deployment models we have three types of deployment models the first one is private deployment model private cloud deployment models uh, and the next one is hybrid and last one is a public in private deployment models the application is the server is deployed in our on premise by the vendors and it is managed by our on premise people or the vendor vendor side uh here it is a single tenant architectures and we can access the servers within our intranet whereas in public cloud the server is deployed in a common place and used by multiple people we can access our public cloud uh, services through an internet and hi, hybrid hi. cloud Hello. yeah yeah, yeah Sa actually no uh, there are multiple people no? Oh, sorry okay uh, can you just go back because i was not able to hear the voice was not there just go back yeah i am audible now okay the, the voice was not uh, listen to me it's not audible okay just go back i have not listened to uh, whatever you said yeah so which slide that I have done. Next, next page is also done. Yeah, that is fine. Third page. So this is yeah, the third page. I don't listen to anything. Okay, now I am audible, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, uh, I am audible now. I messaged you, but are you not able to get that? Uh, I did. Sorry. I put sorry. it in the chat. If you see the chat. No. Sorry, I I didn't saw the saw your message. No okay, okay, Santa. Just I, again, I'm repeating this one. Okay, uh, yeah. in on in our on-premise environments, we have to manage this entire stacks from network to applications. If there is any problem in the network or in our storage or in the servers, we have to manage. And during those times, we have some outage. Whereas in uh, uh, whereas in uh, cloud. we don't have that problem because we have a multiple uh, network connections and we have multiple servers so they design in that such a manner that if any failure occur it will automatically switch to the another network and it will automatically switch to another uh, uh, servers here we have three service models one is infrastructure as a service 
uh, next one is a platform as a service and third one is a software as a service in platform as a service we have uh, in infrastructure as a service the net till from network to operating system the service is managed by the service providers either it is the aws or azure or google cloud whoever it is they will manage just will go and request them i need a, a service with windows operating systems i need a service with the linux operating systems <laughs> on top of the service we will install our uh, run times and then applications and data Th that layer the green layer we have to manage this green layer we have to manage in platform as a service we'll go and request them instead of installing the software by our own we, we will request the service providers give a java based uh, service or give a, a sap based service or give a oracle database like that they will create a service instead of us they will create a service they will install the applications and they will give it to us we have to worry only about data and applications this is mainly used by the developers and last one is software as a service software as a service the entire la uh, layer should be managed by the service providers just will go and create a username password and then we'll start using the best examples is salesforce applications and gmail you have any doubt on this uh, layer in the service models uh, no okay shall i proceed yeah, next yeah. Next up, uh, deployment <laughs> models. We have three types of deployment model. One is private, another one is a public, and third one is a hybrid. In private, this is uh, it is a, a single tenant architectures which is deployed in our on-premise data centers. Either it is managed by the service pro uh, service provider or uh, it is uh, managed by us. Okay, but if there is any failure in the network or uh, storage that may be a outage again that may be a outage because it is a on-premise cloud environment that is called as a private cloud and this is uh, accessible only within our intranet whereas coming to the public cloud it is a multi-tenant architectures and we are going to pay what uh, how much uh, whatever service we are going to use for that alone we are going to pay the top uh, vendor is aws microsoft google cloud platform we can access the public cloud through the internet. In some scenario, we have to connect our private cloud and then public cloud. For that, we will use a direct connect or we will use a VPN. That deployment model is called as a hybrid deployment model. And AWS history. AWS is started in the year 2006 with uh, 12 services like uh, ACS, S3, and then uh, uh, cloud computing services now they have around 4500 plus services recent days they are more concentrating about iot and machine learning related services aws introductions it is a enable the business and de developers to use the web services to build a scalable and sophisticated applications okay they provided storage service network service database service compute service content delivery networks management tools iot services machine learning services media related services developer tools they are providing and advantages and benefits of cloud uh, it is overall lower overall cost the reason is we are going to pay only what we are going to use if you are using less we will pay less if you are using more we will pay more and it is very open and flexible and it will replace the capital expenses if you're going to deploy your on-premise data centers you have to spend at least 5 lakhs to 10 lakhs it depends on your store, uh, server server capacity you have to spend some uh, lakhs of money to build your on-premise environment whereas in cloud just will go and use and then we will pay and the speed of the uh, server creation is also is very minimal within the two minutes we can create a service whereas in on-premise that is not the case we have to wait from minimum three months to maximum one year or two years in some cases and hardware refresh cycles every three to five years they will refresh their hardware. Uh, whereas in our on-premise that is not the case once we purchase we have to use it uh, uh, 
hard work till the support is over and elasticity we can increase the server capacity as well as we can decrease the server capacities it is very secure and durable and is self service because most uh, 90% of the services are being managed by the the infrastructure has been managed by the uh, service provider so we no need to worry about the infrastructures we we have to concentrate only on the application development and securing our applications and also it will uh, eliminate the capacity guessing if you wrongly capacity uh, guess your server capacity either you can go and increase or you can decrease the server capacities uh, aws market uh, in the globe aws alone is occupied 31 percentage of the public cloud pu public cloud market whereas other remaining 10 to 12 uh, service providers they occupying the remaining 39 percentage of the markets server capacity is also at compared to other competitors they have six times larger server capacity and price is also very flexible compared to others research services in 2014 they have uh, they invented uh, amazon ebs and then they introduced uh, ec2 and 2009 they uh, introduced amazon aws import and export it is uh, file transferring technologies and uh, IAM identity and access management service along with other 48 services currently they have 4500 plus services and these are some of the services under compute we have uh, EC2 and then we have uh, elastic container services and we have a uh, Kubernetes services we have lambda serverless technology we have uh, elastic load balancer auto scalings under storage, we have S3, EBS, EFS, glaciers, database, migrations, networking related services, developer tools, management tools, media services, analytics, again, security, identity, and compliance. We have around 4,500 services in AWS. AWS global infrastructures currently they are having their data centers in 18 geographical locations with more than 55 data centers and then 100 plus edge locations uh, region is nothing but it is a geographical locations in each geographical locations minimum they have two data centers to provide a high availability uh, fault tolerance applications and also we have edge locations it is a small level of data centers from that they are providing dns and uh, caching mechanism services and upcoming we have upcoming four data centers and these are the services which is provided from the edge locations amazon route 53 aws cloud friends aws uh, web web access uh, firewall and then AWS Shield. And coming to the edge locations, we have 100 plus edge locations. In India, we have edge location at two places. One is at Chennai, another one in Mumbai. Whatever AWS request is coming, it will be uh, from India, it will be route through these two uh, data, edge location data centers. And this is their fundamental infrastructures. They have their regions. On each region, they have uh, availability zones, and then they have uh, edge locations. Uh, fundamental services are compute service storage service network and database services and then they have application uh, related services like content delivery network cloud front and uh, SES SNS SQS cloud search EMR and then other uh, elastic beanstroke kind of services and then they have a deployment tool like uh, cloud formations beanstrokes and uh, IAM and uh, access and uh, identity and access management services Okay, our training methodology is uh, it is 90 percent is practical and 10 percent we have some theoretical concepts. Uh, the practical session is like this: we, we will ask you to create your free tier AWS account. That you can have a 12 month uh, service access with some limitations. Examples: we can use uh, EC2 cloud computing service 750 hours every month. Either it is a Windows or Linux based operating systems with 1 GB RAM and 1, G 1 core CPU with 30 GB hard disk. Coming to DynamoDB, there we can store 
20 uh, 25 GB of data with 25 read unit and 25 write unit capacities relational database services there we will use uh, 750 hours again per month we can use the sound to 750 hours coming to AWS certifications currently we have eight certificates you can speak uh, skip about this fundamental certificate apart from from this fundamental we have eight uh, uh, main certificate three at associate level two at professional level and three at specialty levels the basics uh, certificate is AWS solution architect where you can learn all the services and developer associate and sysops administrator associate where they more, more mainly concentrate about the implementations and uh, once if you completed AWS solution architect you can go for solution architect professional levels either if you completed developer associate or sysops administrator associate you can go, go for the uh, devops engineer professionals in specialty again we have three things one is network specialty big data specialty and security specialty currently i am a aws certified solution architect associate certified now i'm looking for uh, looking to take aws sysops administrator associate and then solution architect professional level certificates in the upcoming months okay uh, that's it about the demo uh, the concepts what are the concepts we are going to see is we have a, a predefined syllabus for AWS solution architect associate examinations those concepts only we are going to see you have any so you you can't write, uh, solution architect profile directly without stating a solution yeah you can't Just go for you can't directly write a professional no no you can't directly go to professional, professional. first you have to clear uh, associate level then only you, you can go to professional level <clears throat> but you, you are not aware of how is that uh, AWS is such a great security and what is AWS such a great cost? Uh, sorry? This, you are not aware of AWS such a great advanced networking and uh, security. What is see, this? Advanced, see, again, advanced, the first you have to complete the associate level, then only you can go to the specialty or professional levels. You can't directly switch to the uh, network specialty without knowing the services. Uh, in specialty levels, they mainly concentrate about the specific topics. If you take a, a, a network specialty, there they mainly concentrate about the net, network things, how to design effective uh, uh, networks, how to uh, design a fault tolerance networks, how to uh, create a disaster uh, uh, networks like that they will concentrate. In security, they mainly concentrated about the securities. Is there any breach in the securities? If you if you want to uh, do a certification in specialty levels, uh, just you ha you need an enterprise uh, account. There you, you can do all this those kind of steps. The basic level of account you can't do this all these specialty things. How much is the fees for this? I think they will for, for each exam for each exam it is one fifty dollars. AWS recommended at least you need a one year of hands on experience before taking the examinations. The reason is uh, it is uh, the exam is scenario based exams. So without uh, doing a hands on experience, it is difficult to go and crack the exam. Okay. Mm. I think uh, probably I need to think through that you know, because my expectation of a demo is different. I was thinking through you know, what kind of a services you use, for what product you use, uh, you use to okay. go to if, if you want, what kind of services you uh, just we are covering in those exams, one second. Because, uh, you know, how do you do a DevOps on that? Uh, one second, one second. I, I'll show you what are the topics we'll cover in this. Okay, this is a solution architect syllabus. First one is, uh, we'll give uh, overall introductions about the cloud computing. 
and then basics of Linux because my, my way of teaching is uh, through a Linux environment only because most of the organizations are using Linux except .NET related things. And using all the services, whatever services, okay, I'll, for, I'll come to this lesson two later before that just I'm showing. Uh, first one is identity and access management where we can see how to create IAM users, groups, roles, and how to create a custom policies and how to provide uh, access to those uh, users, those kind of stuff we can see it here. And Amazon Virtual Private Cloud, it is a networking com concepts where we can see how to create our custom v uh, virtual private cloud, uh, under that how to create a public and private subnodes, and then internet gateway, routing tables, how to re uh, restrict the IP address, uh, network, a NAT device and network securities, a security groups, network access control list, and what is the best practice of VPC and how to achieve those things, we'll see it in the virtual private cloud, under the virtual private cloud concepts. And coming to EC2, cloud computing services, uh, my, we are mainly focusing on uh, three things. One is EC2, uh, we'll see very in depth about EC2 and basics details about AWS Lambda, that is serverless technology, and Elastic Beanstroke, it is a past technology. Under a, uh, EC2 cloud computing things, we will see uh, how to create a server and how what is Amazon machine image and what is instance types and how to create a volumes, how to back up the volumes that is taking a snapshot from that snapshot, how to launch the new servers and how to create our custom uh, Amazon image using that custom Amazon image, how to scale multiple applications and how to do uh, auto scaling and how to do uh, elastic load balancing, those kind of stuff we can see it in the elastic load, uh, elastic cloud computing. And coming to the storage, uh, we have uh, S3. Under S3, we'll see uh, lifecycle management policies, uh, version enablement, cross region replications, and static web hostings. Uh, and then we have uh, EBS, EFS, apart from S3 in storage, we have uh, EBS. EFS, Glacier, and Import Export Service, Snowball Service, Snowball Edge, Snowball Mobile, those kind of stuffs we will learn it in the storage services. And Route 53, it is a DNS services. We have five types of uh, routing policies. Those five types we will we'll see it in the practical manner. And database services, again coming to database services, here we'll see about uh, uh, relational database service and DynamoDB. Uh, in a theoretical manner, uh, Elastic Cache and uh, Redshift, we'll see it in a practical, uh, sorry, uh, uh, relational database services and, and DynamoDB, we can see it in a practical manner. Elastic Cache and then uh, Redshift, we can see it in a theoretical manner. Since these two services are uh, Elastic Cache and Redshift is a, a paid service and we need a heavy application to achieve these things. And coming to application services, here we'll see SQS, SNS, SES, and all. It is the application service, how to integrate these services with our uh, uh, ongoing development applications. And then we have uh, security related things. These things we'll see. Here we'll see about uh, uh, security responsibility, AWS Cloud Trail, CloudWatch, Trusty Advisors, Cloud Formation Templates, and all. And then how to create a disaster recovery sites. Okay, using this service, we have to achieve high availability, cost efficient, and fault tolerance and scalable systems. This is the main curriculum for AWS. If you want to uh, deploy your DevOps framework here, then we have to integrate our DevOps tools also along with the services. How much time that will take? Sorry? What is the service for it and how much that? Okay, for DevOps, uh, uh, we'll start from JIT and then Jenkins, Ansible, we'll see it in a very details and then, uh, uh, sorry, uh, JIT, Jenkins, Ansible and Docker, we'll see it in a very details and then Kubernetes, just we'll see introductions alone. Again, uh, for this one, uh, for AWS, it is uh, 25 hours to 35 hours programs, whereas uh, DevOps, it will go based on how speed you are grasping, based on that it will go for the 35 hours to 40 hours or 50 hours. Okay, what is your uh, classes timing? Uh, currently I'm handling in the weekends only. 
uh, since because I'm also working a professional, so I'm doing a, taking a classes in the weekends. Uh, this Saturday, maybe this Saturday or Sunday, we'll start a new AWS batch uh, in uh, Editor Pro. Uh, just if you if you require if you uh, interested to join, we'll st uh, start at Saturday evening. No, but is it online? Is it a uh... One -to -one it is a, it is a one one to one classes one to one or one to many uh, classroom type. Okay, I will not be better in those type. No, because I am not living here. Okay. You, you are them. looking for online class or uh, what? It? Yeah, I am looking for only online class specifically. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Then I will discuss and then I will uh, update it to this uh, ED2 Pro guys. They will contact to you. Hello, sir. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. Uh, you are looking for both AWS and DevOps or only AWS? Uh, it should be both. Okay, okay. Okay, Sindhu, then I'll check. I'll check and then I'll update you by today evening. Okay. Okay. And if it is online class, means uh, what is your preferred timing? Yeah, we can only but it's a UK time. Okay, UK time. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, UK evening time is okay for you? Yeah. Yeah, evening time. India evening time is okay for me. No, India evening time is I'm saying that around uh, 9 p.m. IST or uh, 9.30 p.m. IST. We'll go for daily one and a half hours or like that. Mm, no, it won't be. Uh, that depends. Not every day. Okay. Because 9.30 p.m. IST is uh, 5 p.m. UK time. Yeah, I might be also in the office. Okay. So, but I'm planning only on weekends. Okay, weekends, uh, then we will see what, what is a preferred time so that we can take that one. Just anyway, I will update to these guys. They will update to you, uh, Santa. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Yeah. Yes, bye. Send me the post numbers, okay? Hello. Yes, sir. We will send you the syllabus, sir. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Both. Ah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. No session will be there.